All right, so today we're talking about just the cost of capital. Now, when we talk about the cost of capital, we're, we're using this referring to the average cost of funds, right? Because if I am a, trying to, to expand my company, to trying to do something, build a new factory, uh, you know, whatever it might be, is that I am going to have to raise capital, right? I'm going to have to raise this capital somehow. Now, coming into there is that capital isn't free. Right? You know, if I borrow money, I don't get to pay it back at a 0% interest. If I issue stock, I don't just get to keep all the profits off it. I have to give something up for that. So that's what we talk about here is that when we talk about cost of capital, it's just the average cost of the funds that are required by investors. Okay? Now, this is ex pretty, pretty much the same thing here as that required return, right? Is that in order for an investor to, to loan me money or to uh, purchase equity in my company is that I have to give them a return adequate to compensate them for their risk, right? So that required return goes into the average cost of funds, okay? That's what we're looking at here. It's the investor's decision. What, at what cost will investors be able to give me the capital that I need? Now, the way we measure this is it's through this uh, idea known as the weighted average cost of capital. Now, the computation here is very similar to the way you do another, any other weighted average, uh, such as computing your grade or, or whatever it is. But basically, what we have here is that we assign weights. And when we talk about a weight, that means that, say, I have 20% of uh, my funds coming in the form of debt, and let's say I have 80% coming in the form of equity. Right? That's saying that I have weights here. I have a weight of 20% on debt, and I have a weight of 80% on equity. Okay? And uh, as we'll see, there's, there's a few other things here um, in addition to these factors. But we also come up with this idea in here as estimates, right? We come up with estimates as to what the cost is, right? Because when we're looking at our cost of capital is that when we're making a decision if we're going to go after a project or not, we need to know what it's, what it's going to take. Um, so these, these are estimates uh, based off of uh, historical figures based off what our bond issues are, what our stock issues are, uh, and preferred stock, etc. Now, when we look at those sources of capital, these are the things that are coming up underneath it. We see we basically we have uh, three different categories here. Okay, we have category. I'm going to call this category A, um, which includes the cost of debt. Okay, and and I'll get into what that after-tax cost of debt here is in just a moment because we do get a tax write-off. Okay, and then we have what uh, we'll call B here is our preferred stock, right, which is that kind of hybrid security in between a bond and a stock. Uh, and then we have here C, uh, which is going to be the cost of retained earnings and the cost of external equity. right? Because that part here in C is basically going to come down to uh, basically common stock. Okay. 